told my wife that uh, I forgot my wallet at the hangar, so uh, it's a good way to sneak out, get, get some alone time. I figured while I'm here, I'll make a, just a really brief video on uh, something that came up. And from your, for your first flight lesson, you have to understand that it's exceeding the critical angle of attack that's going to make the wing stall, uh, not airspeed. You could um, have a wing that's not stalled at, at five knots, and you could have a wing stalled at 300 knots. Um, and it's important to know the difference. And that's pretty much where the debate ends. Uh, you could talk about um, airspeed and how it relates to the changing uh, of the angle of attack of a wing, and, and that's fine. But you need to understand that it's exceeding the critical angle of attack, which never changes on the wing, that's gonna make the, the wing stall. Uh, the airspeed varies from, you know, like I said, zero miles an hour to 300 miles an hour. Um, you can have a wing that stalls, so it's important to know the difference. The important thing when you talk about um, stall recovery is, you know, unloading the wing. It's not adding power, it's not increasing airspeed, it's none of that matters and that's out the window, it's unloading the wing. Um, that goes true for, you know, 152 all the way up to the Airbus that I fly for work. Uh, we do EET training, which is part of our AQP training. It's uh, extended uh, envelope training. It's unusual attitudes. It's high altitude stalls. And, you know, the instructors, they hammer it from the first time you do it. Uh, it's unload the wing. It's not increase airspeed. It's not add thrust. Uh, thrust up at 390, it's not going to do anything for you. It's all about reducing the angle of attack, unloading the wing, get the wing flying again. Um, and I had Lee uh, Hanger145 on, on Instagram, who you guys probably have followed. If you don't, I'm sure you've seen his videos. He put together a quick video for me in his extra 300S, because uh, I wasn't about to go do accelerated stalls in, in the Cub, um, showing that you could stall the wing at 120, 30, 30 knots, whatever it was here, and you'll see the airspeed indicator, and not stalling the airplane when the airspeed indicator was literally at zero. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll show you that. All right, here we go. Uh, he's well over the stall speed of the X300S. He's going to bank the airplane, uh, increase the G-load of the wing, and yank back, and then the launch will happen. There you go. There's the stall. You see the buffeting. The airplane breaks. And then you're going to do it again. Opposite way. You see the stall right there. All right, now it's something a little different. He's going to do uh, basically like, I think it's a hammerhead turn. Uh, but look at the airspeed indicator at the top of at the top. The airspeed indicator goes to zero. All right, so he's doing something a little different. You go all the way up, watch the airspeed pegged at zero, but the, the wing is still flying. There's no buffeting, there's no stall. Why? Because he's not breaking, he's not exceeding the critical angle of attack. That's the key there. There you go, you can just see how we yank back on the stick. You see the critical angle of attack, a little stall speed, we saw the buffet. Straight up, watch, look at the airspeed indicator, basically going to zero. There's no buffet, there's no stall. The airplane just slices right on through the horizon with the, with the wing flying. He's not loading up the wing. There you go, loads up the wing. See basically a, a snap roll. Um, I was looking uh, I was looking at the statistics, um, AOPA puts out, uh, they have the, the uh, AOPA Air Safety Institute, and they have a lot of good articles, and I was reading an article, uh, this, I think the publication was, a, the article was a couple years ago, but it talked about um, stall spin accidents, and I was surprised because I assumed that the highest number of, of uh, stall spin accidents in the traffic pattern would be based to final with a skidding turn, um, which I'll do a video about that in the future. Um, skidding turns, that, that type, but it's actually the highest amount of stall spin accidents in the pattern are actually climb out um, and, and just t your typical maneuvering, which is interesting, right? Because you're high power, theoretically, you're at a higher airspeed than you would be at landing, but this is where most of the accidents come from. So, you know, airspeed is important, but you have to understand that it's really just angle of attack and the wing could stall at any airspeed and you got to hammer that home. Um, and, and I've been fortunate enough in my aviation career where I've made some mistakes before um, doing some stupid things, but I was lucky and I was fortunate and I had altitude to recover. Um, you know, and then that's how a lot of people get killed is they, they, they show off and they're at, let's say, 90 knots and they bank the airplane 
60, 70 degrees over the beach to show off and they, they stall the airplane and, and they can't recover and, and that's what happens. So that's why it's really important to understand that it's uh, exceeding the critical angle of attack, not airspeed, that's going to stall a wing. And that's it. That's where the debate ends. And I'm, I could talk about the formulas and all that stuff, but I'm more of a visual person and I'm quite frankly, I'm not that smart. So the formulas I'd probably get wrong um, and I'd sound like an idiot. So I'm just going to show you the video. Uh, also, when it comes to, to stalls, this, everybody likes to rag on the FAA, right? And that's fine. But this, the airplane flying handbook is actually a phenomenal, phenomenal resource. And the first thing it says, and I'll put this up there, but I'll read. This is the only thing I'm going to read. The first thing it says when it comes to stalls is, a stall occurs when the smooth airflow over the airplane's wing is disrupted and the lift degenerates rapidly. This is caused when the wing exceeds its critical angle of attack. That can occur at any airspeed, in any attitude, with any power setting. So, I mean, that's it, right? First thing it says. Good book. Another good book is uh, Stick and Rudder by Wolfgang uh, Languish, I think. Um, that's a good book, too. But Airplane Flying Handbook, it's, it's really good. Um, so if you haven't had that, uh, read it or at least find it online and get this. So that's, that's important. You know, one of the things, too, is um, going through the... the uh, AOPA's uh, Air Safety Institute article um, talks about the stall spin accidents in um, for egg pilots, aerial applications, right? And uh, more than half uh, of the accidents that occur with aerial applications are during the pull-up uh, and ensuing tight low altitude turns, right? And those are those speeds at which they're doing it are nowhere near the published stall speed, which is quite lower. And again, the, the published stall speed in a POH that's unaccelerated 1G flight. You know, and how often, you know, you're out flying, you're up a cruise, okay, that's, you, you pull the power back and you maintain that altitude and you know you're going to stall at that published airspeed. But how often are you really at that? You know, you're, you're climbing, you're turning, you're descending, you're, you're loading up the wing, you're pulling Gs. Um, so that's why it's very important to make the distinction early on in your flying career that it's exceeding the critical angle of attack uh, that stalls the wing, not airspeed. Um, like I said, you know, you can stall an airplane at, at 400 knots and you cannot stall an airplane at, at five knots. Uh, so very important that any questions, comments, concerns, or from CFIs out there that want to throw in, um, how they teach this, uh, make the, you know, go ahead and put the comments because I know when I first started flying, I just, I couldn't, it, it didn't make sense to me. I, I couldn't, I couldn't grasp, uh, the idea that an airplane could be descending at 120 knots and, and stall. It just didn't make any sense to me at all. But uh, watch this video and, and it'll, it'll make sense.